Welcome to this photo focus special webinar, the introduction of Loom Cube 2. Hi, I'm Kevin Ames. I'm the director of content for photo focus, and we're going to be talking with my special guest, Riley Strickland. Riley is the co-founder of Loom Cube, and he's also the vice president of global marketing. Hi, Riley. How are you doing? Kevin, great. How are you today? Doing really, really good. Um, I'm curious, and I think a lot of people are too, how did you get the idea for the original Loom Cube? So the original Loom Cube was actually invented by uh, the founder of Loom Cube, Mornay Sherry. So he had a long history in software. Myself, uh, Mornay, and Matt, uh, the three guys at the very beginning of Loom Cube, were all working in the imaging world, but in the software space. And so uh, Mornay, very brilliant inventor and product engineer. And so really what he was seeing was this trend in camera technology getting smaller and smaller, which was essentially, as we saw, the iPhone, the GoPro becoming the, the mainstream cameras out there taking the majority of content that we would see on the day. There was a lack of lighting solutions designed for those cameras. So as we all know as photographers, videographers, you know, traditional lighting can be large light stands, bulky, big, uh, just hasn't been innovated as much as cameras have over the last 10 years. And so seeing that, the original intention for the Loom Cube being a pocket-sized flash and video light was to pair with your iPhone. So seeing the iPhone be the actual uh, big overtaker in the imaging space, creating a flash and video light that was designed for that, that had Bluetooth capability, but then on top of that, in 2013, 2014, when GoPro was all the rage, that's kind of why we built it to spec of the GoPro as well as the durability and the waterproof down to 100 feet so that you could also pair it with your GoPro and get the crisp footage that you could get during the day, but in lower light situations. And so that was really the original concept that was launched via Kickstarter uh, by us in 2014. And obviously the business has changed a lot and we'll, I'm sure, get into that today. But that was the original concept, a, a small light for iPhone and GoPro to help those smaller sensor devices capture high quality imagery. Well, I have to ask, I, you know, I know what one is. I've got several of them myself. You know what they are, but could you give us, give our viewers an idea of exactly what is a Loom Cube? Yes, absolutely. So have one right here. So I would basically, the size reference would be about the size of a golf ball, give or take, one and a half inches cubed, and essentially is packing the power of a high quality video light that rivals the 500 to $1,000 range. So small internal battery LED, it's got a 60 degree beam angle and essentially pours out 750 lux of light. It's a 1500 lumen LED and fully adjustable waterproof and so you have 10 brightness levels it's got a mobile app where you can adjust it zero to 100 percent and basically is designed for those on-the-go shooters to give them a portable led lighting device versus some of the traditional lighting that is the larger bulky kind of single uh single placement leds so this is basically our solution to say the same power you would have in about a 500 to a thousand dollar unit pack it into a small golf ball size solution that has a pretty even output and allow that to be recharged, portable, durable, waterproof, and fit in your camera bag, fit one, four of them, and uh, and basically solve those lighting solutions, whether it be a small space uh, or just traveling on the go. Great. Well, one of the things that's interesting is that you guys have been, you've really, really been uh, one product until you got to uh, Photo Plus last year, and you introduced the uh, Loom Cube Air, then right. you've come in with the panel, and now the third, in less than a year, the third new product is the Loom Cube 2, and that's what we're here to talk about. Would you like to give me an idea of what the Loom Cube 2 is and how it differs from the Loom Cube 1? Absolutely. So basically the intention, and, and you'll see that continue, you've seen a hefty amount of product be launched by Loom Cube this year. Uh, our research and development team has been extremely busy over the last year. So the Loom Cube 2 or the Loom Cube 1, for example, the actual original trademark that we had trademarked was the world's most versatile light. And so basically this one lighting solution that you could mount to drones, cameras, GoPros, smartphones. And it was the company was basically based around a single lighting solution. And the pivot we made this year was what that allowed us to do was uh, access and penetrate a lot of markets in terms of the lighting category. But 
for the drone section, the action camera, the photo and video, it wasn't necessarily particularly designed for spec for those specific customers. So it worked. We were able to be used in all those categories, yet they didn't. it didn't have all the features designed for that specific customer in mind because it was more of a broad-based LED than a specific uh, designed LED. And so the pivot this year has been to switch to basically LoomQ becoming more of a, a specialty lighting company and thinking of each of those independent end users and saying for you know the drone customer, let's go out and pr- create a drone-specific lighting solution for that need, which was the LoomCube Strobe, which we launched in June. Uh, for the videographer, we know that they need bicolor adjustability, much longer runtime, slim and durability uh, for on-the-go solutions. So that's where in August we launched the LoomCube Panel, which is our bicolor video light. And so for this particular LoomCube 2, basically was coming back and readdressing the photography and content creation community. And so built in some specific features, improving the uh, the optical sensor so it has much better flash capability for flash photography. Uh, improving the LED quality, so bringing it from an 85 CRI to a 95 plus CRI. Improving the beam angle, LoomCube 1, due to the lens we had for the maximum output, almost had a little bit of a flashlight capability or, uh, or issue to it in the sense that it was firing very much out of the center, so had a bit of a hot spot in image creation, whereas LoomCube 2, we've been able to match the LED power. Uh, so LoomCube 1 is going to be right here, and LoomCube 2 is right here. So you'll notice that they're very different lenses, and that's one of the big improvements made is a completely top-to-bottom redesign of the lens. And again, this is, boils back to us really thinking about that end customer, um, LoomCube 1 was really designed for high power output, primarily because the GoPro and those small devices needed to throw a lot of light to be able to capture a good imagery. Uh, and so for us, knowing that LoomCube 2 is much more designed for somebody with a full sensor, a DSLR mirrorless, has the ability to capture a lot of light in a better scenario. So we've actually redesigned the lens to have a much more smooth and even beam angle, uh, wider to cover a little bit larger of a range, and then absolutely no hot spots. No, uh, or really food, smooth fall off, which has improved it from an image quality. And of course, uh, the Loom Cube One is about, it's still daylight, but 6,000 to about 6,500 Kelvin. Whereas now, uh, the Loom Cube Two is a true 5,600 Kelvin. You'll notice it's a lot better on skin color. And also the higher CRI is going to really render the colors a lot better in imagery. So really thinking about that end customer and kind of pulling back to, uh, to ensure that all of the specs that we produced in there were the best of the technology available to us today, uh, the highest power and runtime, and then also with a quality that is designed for that customer. And one thing we couldn't forget, um, just from a current technical perspective, we uh, made the switch from micro USB to USB-C, which is uh, basically the uh, the market leader in terms of a, a, a recharge capability. So we're really excited about that. You've used a set of initials that uh, people might not entirely understand. CRI, what does that mean? So CRI is relative to the color. So uh, essentially what you're going to be focusing on from a CRI perspective, color rendering index. So essentially what it is is when so our absolute CRI top quality is going to be you know our sun. We look at the sun as, from our perspective, the sun is the largest continuous light source for image creators. So during the day, we have absolute true colors, highest at noon, and 56 daylight, that's where that term comes from. But the actual color rendering uh, index is from the output of the light in terms of is the light that's shining on a subject. So if a light's shining on me, for example, I'm wearing a white shirt. Is my white shirt with blue writing, is it going to be an accurate white in terms of the color that is represented? So the lower the color rendering index, uh, for example, LoomQ1, which had a uh, lower 85 realm, it might render this shirt, although it's white, to seem a little bit off in terms of the actual color, which would force essentially a little bit more in the post-production process. Um, so the higher the CRI is going to essentially render those better colors. CRI is going to be something that we really want to focus on. And so we're really thrilled to be able to bring that up to 95 plus. And of course, 100 is your ideal like that. Let's look at some of the photographs that uh, your ambassadors have made with the Loom Cube 2. Uh, I yep. think people will be very interested. 
Yeah, yeah. So that's where we uh, we differentiate ourselves a lot in the lighting category due to the waterproofing capability. Uh, so it opens up just so many different creations. Now, for example, this image is created completely underwater, whereas the image uh, taker and the camera, everything's underwater. The whole image is created there, too. Sometimes water is what we find an incredible diffuser. And so a lot of whether it's you're throwing some lights in a fountain or at the beach just in a tide pool, that's where the waterproof capability of a Loon Cube is really interesting. So this one in particular, super, super cool in terms of the ability of hiding light in the scenes, um, you know, holding light within hands can create this unique glowing effect. Here we have someone with the Loom Cube rig on an underwater camera. So this goes to what you were talking about. People can use the Loom Cubes underwater. We brought this one to a 30 feet waterproof depth. So it kind of boils back to the the overall concept of Loom Cube being a specialty lighting company and thinking of the end creator. So the end creator, this light has optical slave capability for flash. It's got your Bluetooth controls. It's got the higher color rendition and, and CRI as well as color temperature. And so really, we did a lot of beta tester uh, working with them in focus groups with the image creators who this light was designed for and found that the high majority were using them at most in situations kind of like the first shot in a pool, which, you know, six to ten feet, as well as in this scenario. So this gentleman, he's an ambassador of us and does some really incredible like shoreline photography in terms of waves and portraits in about waist deep to chest deep water and just really, really creative imagery. And so the waterproofing we wanted to keep, but those creators uh, from the Loom Cube 1 perspective who were really diving between 30 feet and 100 feet, it was more of a, uh, a dive light is the way they were using it. So less of the features that we built in, the flash and things like that were important yeah. to them. So I want to just announce that as well and say you've seen a lot of the products be launched this year in terms of our R&D team, R team being busy and designing lights for particular customers. I want to you know, announced that those customers who are going down to 100 foot depth, who are more of the dive creators and capturing content deep under the ocean, we certainly haven't forgotten about you. Um, the Loom Cube 2 is designed for kind of the above ground slash shallow water photographer. Uh, but I can assure you that our R&D team is busy with a number of projects and hanging tight through 2020. We're going to certainly uh, keep that customer base in mind. We don't want them to be left out of the Loom Cube family. So although Loom Cube 1 still are available, at places like Best Buy, b and and Amazon, you get the 100-foot depth. There's also going to be some stuff coming uh, down the line so that you still can create down to 100 feet and, and potentially more. So um, you mentioned underwater. Here we are above water, and this is just a beautiful scene. Yeah, so this is one of our ambassadors who's over in Europe, and he has some absolute stunning imagery. And what's really cool about Loom Cube, so an, an image like this, as we all know, you know, we've all taken a sunset photograph or a, a, an image in this time of day, whether it be sunrise, sunset. A lot of the cameras, particularly smaller ones, you'll notice he has a GoPro on the front, front of his rig there. Um, cameras tend to have a tough time having dual exposure. So, you know, we've all been in the scenario where, if you take a sunset photograph, the sunset's perfect colors, yet everything is silhouetted in the foreground. And then if you tap to try to get the stuff in the foreground, uh, you know, in in color, the entire sunset will blow out and you get none of that color. And so what Loom Cubes, having a small portable light allow you to do is basically, you know, render the camera to get the proper exposure for an image like this that's going to have the colors of the backdrop, the scenery, but then having a little fill light in the front. And so that's the way he's using Loom Cube 2 here. And having that high CRI, um, as well as the daylight balance color temperature, you can really see the greens and the really cool colors in his kayak. Yeah. And so he's using Loom Cube as a fill light to get the foreground and all the detail and the color there, while still maintaining the exposure of the overall image. So, you know, again, a larger light and or we notice he's in more of an adventure-seeking uh, scene. So a light that's not waterproof, you know, he's going to be high stress if his light isn't waterproof while he's trying to capture this shot. Because if he drops it, he's screwed. Um, so Absolutely. Like, that's the benefit of you know durability, waterproofing, allowing you to really go out there, adventure, get the shot you want, but have gear that's also going to stand right. up to the uh, to the elements. This next shot is interesting because. It's being illuminated with a Loom Cube. He, it looks like he's wearing it on his head. Yeah, so one of our the benefits of our products, not only are, is every single one a quarter 20 driven solution, just to be able to mount to any tripod. If you visit our website, it's very easy to find. We've got you know 50 different accessories from 
backpack mounts to head mounts to GoPro adapting mounts. So essentially, whatever you're looking to do, we want you to have that portable light. So as well as looking at this, Loon Cube 2, one of the big, big benefits, which I'm sure we'll touch on, is it comes with uh, diffusers and gels inside the box. Right. So he's actually, you can see the snow is white, but the Loon Cube looks quite orange. So he's actually using the warming gel that comes inside the box to get that kind of warmth effect of that evening almost lantern type look. So that's where, you know, in just these few images, we've been able to show the Loon Cube illuminating a scene from off camera as a fill light, as well as being used in camera and in scene to be able to have some, uh, some of those really cool effects to get creative with the imagery. The other pictures we've seen have had the Loom Cube illuminating the scene. Here we see the Loom Cube as part of the composition. Exactly. So that's one of the benefits of having it be so small and portable. Uh, you know, mountable to the body as well as using it handheld to, to do things such as light painting and some really cool effects. One of, one of our bigger customer bases are people getting creative with long exposure photography. And so having the Loom Cube be small and also adjustable uh, makes it easy to be used as a light painting tool as well as because we have, uh, we built in a really secret feature in Loom Cube 2, which we call low light mode. Um, the manual buttons on the Loom Cube are basically going to jump you 10% increments, so 10, 20, 30, 40, etc., up to 100%. But there's a little low light mode feature for night photography and long exposure, where if you hold both buttons on the Loom Cube 2.0, it's going to drop you to 1% increments. So you're going to be able to control your Loom Cube manually 1%, 2%, 3%. And that's really great for long exposure, so it prevents any blown out imagery, as well as in a situation like this that might have a light painting scenario, the less or the brightness of your light will indicate the thickness of your light painting lines. So the nice and more kind of low light it is on 1%, you can have really defined lines. And the, the brighter it's going to be, it's almost like the difference of using a really big Sharpie versus a fine point pen. Um, That's so, a good way of putting it. Another yeah. thing I've noticed is that loom cubes are being used a lot being mounted to drones. And we have a photograph here of a drone flying a pair of loom cube twos with a bridge in the background. Yes, sir. So that's one of our largest markets is actually drone. Uh, so the two main components we see using loom cubes on drones is one as illuminators and i.e. headlights for the drone. So you can see where you're going. You can explore new areas camera facing down, you can get some really creative drone imagery uh, illuminating the scene below you. But in this scenario, a lot of our drone users are actually long exposure photographers. So they'll use the drone for aerial light painting and basically mount the loom cubes to the drone and do the same thing a handheld light painter might do, but paint over the bridge. And so this is just a really, really crisp shot from one of our ambassadors uh, showcasing the drone setup on uh, DJI Matic Pro. Uh, I think it's, it's interesting, too, because of your Bluetooth capability, you can control the output of the lights. Not that you probably want to on the drone, and you could if you needed to. Absolutely. So that remote controller is really nice. You don't have to bring the drone back, land it, adjust it. You can have that Bluetooth control from about 60 feet and, and do all that from, a, from wireless control. Well, you've been talking about long exposures, and some of the things that are really long exposures are astrophotography, and I, I love what the Loom Cube ambassadors are doing with lighting scenes and having really super long exposures in the background like this. Uh, it looks like a nebula. Yeah, we, we are so fortunate to have the, the audience and the customer base and creators that we have. Their stuff is just unbelievable. We sit here truly in awe watching some of the Instagram and, and social submissions come in every day. So long exposure, obviously, big astrophotography community on the Instagram and, uh, and you know, getting the Milky Way shots. And so what's really cool is if you are just out there, like this shot, for example, if you are out there and just going to take a long exposure shot, it's, you got to have quite a long exposure and, and some skill to get that sky. So pretty much like the mountains in the background, your entire foreground is going to be a silhouette. And so what's great with the Loom Cube is that you can provide some fill light. And again, with that long exposure, uh, low light mode, you can prevent any blowouts by going down to 1% output, which is barely on just a small little glowing lamp, all the way up to uh, 100%. And then we also have the ability to just flash it once or twice. So giving a little kiss of light on some different areas. And uh, and yeah, we, we are just so fortunate. The, the long exposure community has really embraced Loom Cubes. And we're excited because Loom Cube 2 offers a much better color temperature. And so in the Loom Cube 1, although very useful, it would have that kind of white-blue uh, output. 
And so now in these scenarios, even a scenario like this image, I wouldn't doubt that in the foreground he threw the uh, the warming gel on. So knowing yeah. that this is kind of a red sandy colored rocks, let's match the color temperature with the gel and get a really cool uh, a cool effect. Well, here's another one that I love. This this is I don't know if it is, but it looks kind of like the delicate arch, but I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. I but think it's, it's something else. Yeah, I don't think it's the the actual delicate arch, but um, it, it's such a beautiful shot. And so what they're doing is they put the loom cube right under it to get that fill under the arch. And we've seen a lot of that really creative stuff. And and that's what's so great is that likely what this photographer is doing as well is they'll put that light under there, step back behind the lens where he's shooting from, and take a number of shots and completely have wireless control. So he doesn't have to run back and forth. So if he takes a 30-second exposure and notices that he's blown out the foreground, all he has to do is pop in his LoomX app, which is the LoomCube app, dial it back a couple percent, take the shot again, see if it is, maybe a little bit more. And so that's really the benefit of that wireless control is the ability to place your light then get behind camera and not have to run back and forth. And the beauty of this one, particularly, the loom cube draws your eye down to the stone structure because without that light, you're going to go up to the sky and miss all of the things in the foreground. So, again, a really great tool. Another image that I really love is this log cabin and the way the star field looks like smoke coming out of the chimney. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, again, such a, such a phenomenal... Uh, the way they've composed that image from lining everything up is just is just beautiful. And so obviously that looks like it may be an abandoned cabin. So, you know, I wouldn't doubt they certainly didn't flip the light switch on inside. And so that's where Loom Cube, you know, put one inside to have that illumination coming out the windows and then one has a little fill. You can certainly see some of the shadow on the left hand side of the uh of the log cabin. So definitely had a loom cube on the left hand side casting a little light to get all the detail because the stone and the wood and the house, there's so much beautiful detail and structure to be brought out there that it wouldn't be able to be captured if there wasn't some sort of lighting the subject. And so that's really where the benefit is. But what a great image. Yeah, uh, I have a very good friend who uses loom cubes in his interior photography to knock the contrast down. This is, this is a mind-blowing photograph, Riley. This is a beautiful home exterior. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, we, we do have a lot of, uh, of architectural photographers. So to get that really crisp look, something like this, a lot of uh, architecture photography, they end up doing a lot of long exposure work and some, you know, might be a few seconds, might be longer to really capture that essence of every single detail um, in the house. And so, again, great opportunity to use LoomCube as a fill light to make sure that you're basically getting the subject its, uh, its best capability. So whether you're doing it creatively from the long exposure and night photography, this could be an image that uh, that might even be helping to sell the house. And so whatever you're doing from an image creation, whether it be personal, hobby, or commercial work, that's where our product really comes in in a number of ways. Well, we've got the, here's, here's a shot of a loom cube mounted on a Canon camera, and it really is small, and I believe it ships with the adapter so you can put it right in, on the camera. You are correct. That was one of the biggest updates we uh, we made. So obviously, we have a number of kits on the website, but really, as I mentioned, uh, thinking about that end customer, this is designed for somebody who is using a DSLR for photography and potentially video and content creation. So in every single box, the original Loom Cube 1 just came with the light and the charging cable, and you're really forced to go and purchase and kind of upsell a lot of the accessories that you wanted to enhance the experience. So in the box, every single Loom Cube 2.0 comes with a USB-C charging cable, a DSLR sleek mount that you see in that photo there, a low-profile one, a mo modification frame, and our two top-selling magnetic uh, diffusers and gels, which is a CTO warming gel, which will drop the Loom Cube down to a 4,500 color temperature, as well as a, uh, a Leaf Filters Zircon Range diffusion. So you'll be able to soften the light. Uh, so we basically, we've got a nice strong partnership with Lee Filters. So both of those are out of their Zircon range of diffusion, which is their 200x uh, highest quality range. And so you you know that not only is the light professional, but the filters that we use are going to maintain that high color quality, that high CRI, and not degrade the light quality because we use a, a great partner like Lee Filters. Yeah, Lee, Lee, Lee and Roscoe both make all of the gels that the movie industry uses, and they are very, very concerned with color. 
you've raised the price, sort of. Ten bucks, yes, sir. Yeah, so we've gone but you really minutes. haven't because you've put about thirty dollars worth of goodies that you that people would have had to buy separately in in the box with the Loom Cube too. Yeah, so I mean, that uh, that modification frame there, it sells on our website for fifteen bucks by itself. Uh, let alone the DSLR mount and the warming and the softening gel. So we've only raised the price by $10. And so not only are you getting a far superior product with a number of other features built in in terms of the light, but having those complementary accessories built in, essentially our goal was to allow the consumer within minutes of opening the box to be able to go out, shoot, whether they want it off camera, on camera, warm down to 4,500 Kelvin temperature, soften it. Um, and the really cool thing about those gels because our whole entire system is magnetic, you can stack any one of our gels. So you're not forced to just use one or the other. You can put a softener and a white on it, as well as, you know, we have a range of red, green, blue, yellow color filters. We've got honeycomb, snoots, barn doors. So really the entire modification uh, range, if you will, of professional lighting accessories, but built and designed for the Loom Cube. Yeah, the, the Loom Cube is a, is a whole lot more than just... Uh a pretty light. You've got a, you've done a really good job with the system. Now, the Loom Cube 2 comes in a single pack or a double pack, right? Correct. You got it. And uh and as any company would, if you're interested in buying multiple lights and and going from a single to a dual pack, there is a little price incentive that'll will drop 5 bucks for you. Uh you save 5 bucks when you buy two. So, uh, that's built in on the website, so any retailers you find or the website or Amazon, you'll find that the, the dual pack is priced to give a little incentive. Right, and the dual pack comes with two sets of filters and and the diffusion and the mounts, right? Two of everything. You got it. That's that's phenomenal. So let's take a, a moment, and uh, I want to talk about one of your other products that uh, – I happen to have and really love, and that is the Loom Cube Air, which you introduced just at a year ago. And uh, I have mine right here. Oh yeah, always and, carry with me as well. Aha! And this has been really a marvelous tool, and I, I just keep like I keep them in my car because I never know when I'm going to need another light. And you've got a special going on for our photo focus viewers and readers. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing with the air? Absolutely. So as a, a bit of a celebration of the Loom Cube uh, 2 coming, we are running a special through photo focus. So we're allowing photo focus. Uh, they'll provide the discount code, but essentially to have a nice deal on all of the air kits, the Loom Cube air, the air VC, which is our desktop lighting system, which is great for uh, working with clients and being illuminated on camera as well as the entire range. So the Loom Cube Air, just as the Loom Cube, uh, we launched it this year, but has its own range of all the gels and diffusers and accessories. So it's got a modification frame that you can also have snoots, barn doors, color gels, all sorts of stuff. Uh, so we've got a 25% off discount that we've offered to Photo Focus. So really excited to allow any of the, the users and followers and community at the Photo Focus uh, realm to have that nice discount on all of the air products that are available on our website. It's celebrate PF 21 and that's for a 25% discount. And Riley, we can't tell you ex how excited we are to have that discount from you. And I know our readers and, and viewers will be really happy about it. You have another product that's done remarkably well, far exceeding expectations. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so the, uh, the LimQ panel has actually been one of our top selling products here. So obviously, uh, I think a lot of the photographers will understand and see themselves migrating to video. Uh, video has been one of the more common mediums of content creation in terms of whether it be uh, marketing assets, you know, weddings, events, uh, all sorts of stuff. So a lot of videographers, what we thought they needed and what the market really deems is that you have to have a buy color ability when it comes to video. You're running guns so real time, room to room, uh, continuous frame rate, of course. And so having the ability to adjust your color temperature on, on the fly without gels and diffusion is really exciting. And so our first bicolor light uh, that goes from 3200 Kelvin all the way up to 5600 Kelvin just with the push of a button is the Loom Cube panel. So you'll find that on our website for a 149 price point. And, uh, and it really is about the size of a cell phone. So it's super sleek. And again, 
exactly like the Loon Cube 2.0. It comes in the box with a uh, DSLR mount to put right on camera as well as a diffuser. And the kicker, which a lot of people really don't expect, is that we've actually not only allowed this thing to charge via micro USB or USB-C to receive power, but you can actually flip it and it's going to end up being a power bank. So when you're out there shooting in the field, this the Loon Cube panel cannot not only light your scene, but it can also charge your phone, charge your DSLR camera. So not only do you not have to worry about your lighting power, but it'll actually power uh, all your other devices as well. So a really cool feature we built in there. The Loom Cube panel is exactly the kind of video light everybody's been waiting for. I'm real excited about using it on the interview we're going to do at Photo Plus for Photo Focus. Riley, it's been a real pleasure having you on this special webinar introducing the Loom Cube 2 and talking about all of the other great Loom Cube products. Remember, everyone, we do have a special exclusively for PhotoFocus viewers and readers of 25% off all Loom Cube Air products with the code CELEBRATEPF21. Until the next time, I'm Kevin Ames for Photo Focus.